What is going on, everybody? Hope everybody's doing well this Monday night. Welcome to Note Night in America. Excited to have you guys here tonight. We're going to put some power in your paper portfolio. Later here with the guys from paperstack.com, Rick and Brett. Uh, excited to have everybody here. It is, you know, 7 o'clock here in Austin, Texas, 8 o'clock East Coast, 5 o'clock on the West Coast. But we are going to have an awesome time no matter what time zone you're in, even though to our, even got some folks from International join us. But anyway, before we dive into uh, what the two guys and our two special guests have to offer up tonight, got a couple announcements. Yes, hey, yes, we usually start right after right 7 o'clock there with a little music. Get the thing of rocking and rolling for everybody. Uh, it starts about three minutes late every time, just because it takes time for people to log in and go from there. But anyway, welcome to have you here. Uh, Note Night in America, guys, rocking and rolling here for you. Uh, if you're here for the first time, welcome. We've got Note and Real Estate Investors alike that are on here. People are interested in getting into the note business, obviously. Uh, these calls are recorded. I do see the red light on my screen, so this got recorded. So if you have to bug out after an hour or so, you can catch the replays. Uh, if you are registered, we will email you out the replay tomorrow as well for you guys. Uh, we will be live streaming this to YouTube as well. And you can catch the replays at weclosenotes.tv or you can click on over to the Note Night in America podcast as well on iTunes. So they're there for you and all our Note Night in Americas that have been uh, or they're open to the public with it being the first Monday of the month. It's open to the public here for everybody. They're all there live on uh, either as a podcast or on YouTube uh, as well for you. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, We Close Notes. Uh, dot com. We'll give you the links all there as well. But anyway, um, also, we've got a big announcement. Tomorrow is a big day for the Note Closure Show podcast. Uh, we hit our 500th episode tomorrow. We'll be live streaming actually live at 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon with a very, very special guest who has not made an appearance on the podcast before. And I'm really, really excited to have this person. But we've got exceeded 380,000 downloads a few minutes ago, over 5 million listeners on our AM, FM dials across the country. And I uh, would love for you guys to review and subscribe. If you go to the weeklosenotes.com website, you can see the most recent episode live stream at the bottom, and you can click the subscribe button there. Be alerted to when we release new episodes. Uh, lots of great content, interviews, guests, vendors, just a whole smorgasbord of uh, note and knowledge on the podcast there for it. But big thanks to all of our sponsors, all of our guests, all of our listeners out there. Uh, thank you so much for making it is the, the, one of the fastest growing podcasts out there. So thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. All right. So I um, want to let you guys know, we do have had a lot of people asking, Scott, when's your next live uh, virtual note buying workshop taking place? Uh, September 6th, 7th, and 8th. That's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You can get signed up by either going to the website, sign up in a virtual training tab, or use the link bit.ly slash virtual note workshop, as it says. If you're joining us for the first time, like what the heck is covered in your three-day workshop, Scott? Well, we've got a variety of stuff. We'll talk to you about how to evaluate deals. We'll learn to buy notes, nationwide hot markets, and we'll have a little bit more of that tonight, obviously, specialized. We'll talk about what and what not to say to get inside the banks. We'll talk to you about how to raise private uh, money for your deal. We'll talk about protecting your assets with asset protection insurance. We'll talk about using your self-directed IRA also to fund or to uh, venture out with people. We'll also dive into due diligence for your deals and how to do it right. Um, we'll help you find financing for your note pools. We'll tell you how to build a nationwide note team. We'll, we'll basically spend a big chunk of time marketing to attract buyers and marketing sellers out there and so much more. So this is the creme de la creme of uh, three-day workshops in the industry. As a lot of people say, it's the closest thing to an A to Z nuts and bolts kind of training you're going to find out there. And you know what? This is not a pitch fest. It's three days of pure content with me. And a couple, a couple guests will be there, but there'll be vendors in the industry there to help you provide some great stuff out there. But without further ado, let's get beyond that. And a lot of people are like, okay, Scott, that's great. You want to take a little bit further? We do have our fast track training dates. Um, we Once a year, we do an online fast track training. And uh, we're going to be doing it in August, actually, August 30th and the 31st, maybe on the on September 1st as well. It's online fast track. So two to three days with me online, really helping you kick your business into gear. No, it's not like the virtual workshop. This is much more of a of us, me giving you my Rolodex, giving you my contacts, my list, and really helping you take your note business to a whole different level. If you want to come in person, we do have one in September, the 20th through the 22nd. It's our mastermind uh, fast track there, three days of intense training to come on in, hang on there for a couple of days. Uh, we're, we're excited about that. If you'd like to find more information about that, just drop me an email at scott at weclosenotes.com. But 
we're here tonight for two crazy cats out there. They're doing some amazing things out there. But before we do that, does anybody have any questions before we dive in and bring on our special guests, everybody? Any questions for you? Any questions for you? Next mastermind is going to be November 15th, 16th, and 17th in Orlando. Ooh, Orlando, Orlando at the uh, Disney World Resort. All right. Uh, Coronado Springs Resort there inside of Disneyland. Yes. Uh, we're excited about this. The contract is signed. We are not changing stuff. November 15th, 16th, and 17th, that's the in-person one. Uh, we may do a, a, a one or two day virtual one just to kind of touch base with everybody since we rescheduled the one in August for that. But we are excited. November 15th, 16th, 17th in Orlando. All right. Is Kevin speaking tonight? I don't know who Kevin is, John. So don't know who Kevin is. So don't know who that is. But anyway, Kevin speaking tonight at the Rat Trap. Yes, we are at the Rat Trap. Okay. Kevin Shortle. Nope. I don't know why Kevin Kevin wouldn't be speaking tonight. No, I think you have the wrong webinar, brother. <laughs> oh, good times, good time. No, this is not Kevin Shortle's webinar. You must have re registered for the wrong thing, but that's okay. You're going to have more fun here anyway. So uh, let me bring on my two distinguished guests out there here. I'm going to unmute them both, which might be the only time you might ever be able to unmute either one of these guys. <laughs> oh. Hang on here. Let's see. Start your video. There's there's Rick. There we go. How's it going? What's going on, man? You guys doing all right tonight? Doing great, man. That's a heck of an intro. I love the music. Get yeah, like the the mu music from Uncle, right? Get the get the get the you know the the blood flowing, the blood a pumping, the heart kicking butt. You know what I mean? It is. Yep. You know that's that's a sometimes a little mild there for us. Instead of the gun, Guns and Roses or Motley Crue or whatever we got rock and roll in there. But anyway. Uh, we're excited to have you guys both there. So you guys want to take a, a second, kind of introduce yourselves or in kind of who you are. And why don't we start with the uh, Brett there a little bit, because Rick and I, you and I go back a, just, a, just a few years further than, than Brett and I know each other, right? A little bit. Go ahead, Brett. Hi, my name is Brett Berkey. I'm with the team of Paperstack. Uh, I am uh, head up the marketing here, do all the, the paid search and advertising and customer support. Been a, an online marketer for that's 2005, so it's what I love to do, and I get to do it here every day at Paperstack. Awesome, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Rick, how about yourself, man? Well, uh, my name is Rick Allen. I am uh, one, of the, uh, one of the founders of Paperstack CEO. Brett, you're, you're a founder. Don't sell yourself short, buddy. Uh, uh, that too. I can't believe you got that. I've been in real estate for, I don't know, since I guess the past 15 years. and I you get here? Yeah, that's where I lost all the hair. I had a head of hair that was suit like Brett's. And then I got into real estate and uh, it started to go. And then I got into notes and it kind of stopped slowing. It stopped creeping, but I said, I'll just shave it off. Um, Scott, I think we've known each other for, for over 10 years, over a decade. Yeah, I was looking back the other day when, I, when we were talking about this in 2004, when you, when I met you and your previous partners and you, we worked on some wholesale deals there in Orlando, 2004. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, it's been a while. So um, I got into the note business um, in 2012, right at the beginning of 2012. The market was starting to constrict, and um, it was uh, you know Blackstone was paying over par for everything at the auction, and I you know it's we joke around and say we stepped in a pile of notes on accident. Um, a bank agent asked me, Are "You guys interested in buying a note?" I said, "Sure, we'll take a look." Um, Ninety grand in debt. Our 90 grand UPB, we paid 8,400 bucks for it, a frame duplex right here in Winter Garden. And uh, we were in and out of it. And, you know, right around 14 days, we can't talk about exactly how, because we shouldn't have been, but we got uh, sold it for 38,000. And we were like, this is it. We found it. We asked around. Nobody knew what notes were. They were like, oh, what do you talk about notes? Like college notes? I'm like, no, never mind. Don't worry about it. Forget I said anything. And we set sail, man. So it's been it's been a fun ride. Been a fun ride. And what made you come up with it? What made you guys create paperstack.com? Well, we got a little we got PowerPoint we run through, but um, what really happened was we were doing um, we were doing a transaction, and 
we had, it was just from front to back, it was a nightmare. The whole thing, um, you know, from the time we got the tape, it was just none of the numbers really kind of matching up. And then they, you know, they said we had the due diligence. Um, they're going to give us due diligence. They're going to put it in Dropbox. And they said they did it. And I was like, look, I'm not seeing anything in Dropbox. And I said, well, I'm looking at, you know, the reports. And it says you're access, you've accessed and accepted the, you know, the share. And I'm like, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, they had put it in Box, uh. not Dropbox. And this whole time we had gone past our, uh, you know, our DD period. And so we had 250,000, it was like hard. And when we finally did get the DD materials and looked at it um, and started running our, you know, running our due diligence, half the assets had already been lost to taxes. Um, there was another half that we had that we found out were condemned and knocked over already. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Things were falling down right around us. And so we we're like, oh man. <laughs> what are we going to do? And so we, we actually wound up doing really well in the trade and they worked with this. But we said, you know what? This is an awesome investment class. There needs to be some transparency. There needs to be some things that make it easy for people to buy the paper. And so we started out with paper stack. And it wasn't awesome. paper stack, it was investment note exchange. And um, you know what, here, I'm going to jump into the, the PowerPoint, kind of run through it a little bit. Cool. There you go. There you go. All right. We're going to go with. Let's go ahead and share your screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Share. All right. So we're paper stack. Um, this is how you spell it. There's no K. P-A-P-E-R-S-T-A-C. Um, is it not doing it's not moving. that's good it's there you go you just gotta hit the button there there you perfect. go perfect <laughs> anyways like i said my name's rick allen you know bought over sold over 40 million dollars in um investment homes uh we manage a, an investment fund right now five million or six million under management we just got our sec um regulation a plus fund approved so we'll start funding that um been on note camp twice and as scott knows or we, we've talked about we've gone back a long, long time. Um, some interesting stuff, if you want to know something about me, I su suffer from something called cluster headaches, which is probably the worst. Uh, they say it's the most uh, most horrific pain known to man, so I hope nobody out there has it. I like to golf, like to fish, and I love to hunt. Um, so like I said, we started this. Um, it was a way sort of to scratch our own itch. Um, paper stack was something that we needed. You know, we love the product or love the, the industry, but we wanted some transparency. And our end product is a reperforming loan. So we were looking for a way to um, sort of have a place to sell our loans and have it be um, a more structured environment. Uh, we needed a better system. Um, so we got started with investment note exchange. We outsourced um, to India and vaporized $30,000 over the course of um, – probably a year. What we got back was garbage. It was spaghetti code, as they call it. And um, it was just bad. It was really buggy. And we realized, like, look, we need an internal team, something that we can um, really go from. So we closed down Investment Oak Change and we rebranded this paper stack. Um, Brett came on board at that time and we got our, our in-house developer, Mike, who is top to notch, one of the best developers, um, for sure in Florida, um, I'd put them up against pretty much anybody in the country, really. Um, and we rethought the whole process and everything along the way, we figured, how can we apply technology to it to make it a better process? How can we apply some technology to make it easier and more um, accessible by the common people? And um, Paperstack was born. So our goal was to create a system that was basically beneficial to both the seller and the buyer, um, something that would open it up to the larger audience. Uh, now we have a fully digital closing process and we've brought everything into the 21st century. Anything that you can think of happens on paper stack, whether it's your communication, it's all synchronized in one spot, you know, from text message to emails, to even phone calls. And we're going to go into a demo here in a little bit um, that you're going to really love what you see. Uh, we launched our pilot, um, our beta product in, in 2017. And it was sort of just an internal thing. We had it, you know, obviously on the web um, and we were using it to sell our assets. And then something strange happened. 
people started showing up on the platform um, and registering and they started registering to sell assets and then deals started happening without us. People were just like, all right, we're going to use your platform to just conduct deals and paper stack really started to get legs. We immediately started a re uh, a rewrite of the product. We loved what we had, but we realized, you know what? We really missed a lot of the key factors or, or the key things that we'd like to make um, changes. And so we started a rewrite. Um, we, along the way, you know, we started getting feedback from our users, which is a good thing. And they started giving us um, sort of a direction. And they would say, you know, I really, I love your program, but I really wish it did this. And um, we have a, a philosophy at Paperstack, it's 2X tech. If we hear something twice as an issue, we try to solve it with technology. And so that's what we've done. Um, we really realized that we had something when we had an institutional um, buyer come up to us and say, look, I've already got a seller that wants to sell and it's actually a uh, $1 million trade. I've already, it's 10 assets, not a lot, but 10 assets for a million bucks because I've already got the buyer, I'm the seller, our investors and their investors are requiring us to start using a platform like Paperstack. So we want to go ahead and, put, and just do this. We don't need to access your marketplace. We just need your system. You're just your checkout process. Um, so that was a real eye opener that, you know, it's changing and it's a good thing. It's a great change because this means, you know, with more transparency, you've got larger institutions coming into the market that are able to um, bring inventory to paper stack, which in turn brings it to note investors who um, typically wouldn't have had a chance to touch this inventory. Just a, a real quick thing. We've got a, um, a $3 billion fund who's starting to list assets on our platform. 3 billion. Um, you know, that's not, that, that's not inventory that just anybody can walk up and get their hands on until, you know, paper stack has made it to where it makes sense for people to jump on there and uh, start liquidating their stuff. Um, so we spent an entire year in development and we just relaunched in November of 18, our, uh, our version one. And since then we've had so many different um, upgrades and, and new features that come along. Um, one of our biggest ones right now is the integration with a self-directed IRA custodian. That's so, huge, baby. Huge. That is huge, my friend, because if anybody's ever invested with a self-directed IRA, let me tell you, it's a pain in the butt to, to fill out the paperwork. And we've integrated with 12 of them now, and they all love it, and they love <laughs> what we got going. So um, we we'll keep developing what people want. We take, you know, we are really, it's a platform that we kind of started and got momentum going, but our users have definitely helped drive the uh, development roadmap and we love to hear feedback and we love to hear the, the complaints and your, your, really the pain points that people feel in this industry um, and we're just, we're starting to solve those so um, we're paper stack I'm going to stop sharing I think we're going to run through a development but do you have any questions Scott what do you think you've seen it I had to unmute myself sorry I was off talking I'm like wait a second I'm muted uh I love it. That's why you guys are here because I think it's really, it's got such a great automated system to let you know when things are there, when things are uploaded, when things are approved or countered. I mean, it's, it's literally about as close to a uh, virtual assistant for your note buyers that's bouncing back and forth. Or as I like to say, coming from the real estate industry, like, you're almost like your uh, contract to close person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, it is. It is. And people are asking, look, I just want to use your closing process. So it's, we, that's, we love it. We love it. So Brett, you want to run through a, run through a demo and show them all the secret sauce, you know, and see how it works. Show people where they can go find some assets. Sure. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll see my, share my screen here. All right. All right. So which screen is it? All right. So yeah, so he kind of explained everything about it in terms of a, with the marketplace with the digital uh, closing process. Um, this, we're going to do everything on a demo site, so it's all dummy data. Um, if you haven't been there, the live site is just paper stack. Currently, I think there's 36 different uh, 36 different sellers and then 240 different assets. So you can go in here and create safe searches. And I'll show you how to do that. So you can go into the site and uh, find this type of assets you'd like to buy. 
save the search. This is something actually did come from a, like a, a user wanting to have first, you know, some, a save search that they didn't want to come back every day and try to look for something. This is something that people use to, you know, just when assets that meet their buying criteria are listed, they get an automated email. They don't, they never get a chance to not miss a deal. Uh, let's just put that there. So that's something that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, this is all getting a rewrite right now. So if you've been to the current for sale uh, page, all this is going to look different and it's going to be really interesting. Um, it's going to be mobile friendly too. It's something that, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this first asset here, this asset that looks like it's made for Note 9 America. So there you go. So this one's uh, something Scott Carson would like to purchase. So I'm going to go ahead and get it before he does. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> so this is the negotiation phase. Um, inside of here, you can negotiate to whatever you want. If you go below 20%, uh, you got to give a reason why you made a, an offer that low, or you just, just give them a, a reason why. So we'll go ahead and do 65. So there's a second, yeah. right? So on the 20%, was that what the, the, the uh, reserve price was of the seller as they put? No, we just, we just saw that sometimes people would come in and uh, just low ball for some reason. And we're like, you know, we don't want them to waste the seller's time. And if they do want okay. to make an offer that low, they need to give a reason why. Yeah, it's definitely a deterrent. We had people coming in and um, we, we're trying to get away from somebody coming in, just Christmas tree in the site and saying, well, I'm going to offer a half price on everything there. Yep. Um, and this is one of the ways that we're, we're doing that. We've got some other stuff coming along, like verified funds, um, where you'll be able, we'll be able to electronically verify funds before somebody even comes on to, uh, nice. so that's just like a huge streamline the process of making sure we got, got people on there who really just want to do transactions. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So I'll go to make that offer. And at, at this point, um, Everything that happens within the site is usually within your transactions area. This is where all the transactions you're in would uh, take place. You can see what percentage of complete you are. You can see which ones you've completed. So if any time you had to come back and download some kind of document that you did in a completed transaction, we stored it indefinitely for you. Um, let's see which one did I just start? I just resorted them all. That was not a smart idea. One second. I think it was this one. Here, Brett, I'll jump on there as a seller and, and handle the seller side from my end. Oh, okay. Well, I was, I was just going to uh, go between screens right here. I have, I have it right here. Okay, that's fine. Um, so this is just data sensitivity, basically saying, look, you're about to, you might view our information, uh, other things that are sensitive. Please don't share this off the site. Uh, you know, the will be good. So this is a transaction window where everything happens. We added a couple of these features down here where you can abandon a transaction add users to a blacklist or add a fee to a transaction. All requests. Those, uh, Brett, scroll down a little bit. On those uh, those features right there, um, the add user to the blacklist, if you're a seller on there and you've got somebody who's jumping in who just is like, look, you know, they're a broker joker. They're going to, you know, it's an open platform, but we wanted to create a way to where you could look, I don't want to deal with that person. If you hit add user to my blacklist, they won't be able to see your assets any longer and they can't contact you. <laughs> that's a very valuable um a very valuable tool it's actually even better than if you were if you were to just be communicating with them in general because if you're going to communicate with them outside the platform they're going to have to have your email or your phone number they could be texting you calling you this way totally anonymized they can't get a hold of you you click add user my blacklist they can't find you anymore and then for there's, you know, I say broker jokers, but there's people out there who are actually honest. They're good brokers. I buy from some of those brokers. And yeah. I'm like, look, these are people who I want to buy. They bring value to it. We have the ability for them, if they're, if they're working within the platform, to use a platform and they can add a broker fee to each transaction. It can be a flat rate. It can be percentage based. So we don't, um, don't think that we're like, man, we don't want to have anything to do with brokers. Actually, not the case at all. We do want to deal with brokers, the good brokers who are actually going to bring value. So go ahead, Brett. Uh, uh, let's see here. So what else we can do in this transaction is we can always add more notes to the transaction. This is cool. Uh, uh, some, some sellers set up their you know their notes the same way. You know, maybe, maybe they have them all the same percentage. Uh, I don't know, like same interest rate, or you just like the way they structured their deals. You can add more of their notes to a transaction. I'm not going to do that for this time right now, but uh, 
some other really cool things is that you can um, you can make a phone call. You can call the other person that will show up on the timeline. Uh, I'll give it a shot to see if we can interrupt Mike during dinner. This will be fun. See if he's he'll, he'll pick up the phone. Let's see. Hello, Trivia Ellington. If you requested a paper set phone call, please press or say one to continue. Thanks. See if I'm, we will now try to reach Battery White Coat. Please hold. This call will be recorded. This is how I annoy Mike every day. Transactions. Any transactions, I just call him all the time. Waiting for Battery White Coat to connect. He might be there. Let's see if he's here. There he is. Is this Barry White Coat? Is this Barry White Coat? Ah, oh, okay. Sorry to interrupt. I'll let you go. Okay, have fun doing the demo. Bye. <laughs> uh, all right, and then eventually that, that automatically shows up on the timeline. It's recorded, and then we transcribe it as well. So you have a record of everything that if you ever need it to go back or say like you have a team, um, you know, this is a if you have a team, someone needs to say, well, what did they actually say? What was the exact? Well, you have a recording of it. They can go back and review it. And so it's, uh, it's great for when you're managing a team account. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good thing to have it. We, uh, we've got this digital audit trail. And so you have something that you can always go back and reference, whether, like I was saying earlier, email, text messages, phone calls. It all takes place and happens on your timeline, which is huge because, you, you know, things can get splintered in your, uh, your conversations get splintered, especially the phone calls. A lot of times the only way to do business is by jumping on the phone. This feature allows you to call somebody, talk to them. You actually don't have to give them your phone number. They don't have it. And you can keep everything in one spot. Um, you know, this is kind of like the, uh, in case it happens and you get sued, you need to make sure you've got it. And we store this on our server. Um, I think indefinitely really, we, well, definitely we haven't taken anything off yet. So it's going to be there for, for years to come. So if you if you need it, it's right here, which is gonna be invaluable. As long as Google's around, it'll be there. That's where yeah. we're going with uh, Google servers. There you go. um, the other things are just you know share a file, you know upload a BPO. So if you got a or you know, paper stack support, if you needed help at any time. Uh, but the gist of the transaction happens within the to dos list. So inside of here, you know um, the sellers accepted the price because um, it just automatically accepts it as if it's the list price that they had it at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and improve closings. We do have three different types of closing schedules. We have escrow and audit, and we have full payment to seller and audit, and we have full payment to seller. Uh, I don't know, some people use them for different reasons. Full payment to seller, I've seen a lot of times people might know each other uh, offline, they just came here to use the system. But uh, for the demo purposes, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just do escrow and audit. Yeah, this to do list, um, it really makes it to where um, a buyer and a seller can go into a transaction and feel comfortable about doing something and not missing a step. These are gonna happen the entire time along the way, um, no matter what. Whether or not you were gonna use PaperStack or not, these are all the steps that you're gonna have to go through if you wanna go ahead and, and buy an asset. You're gonna have to have your vesting stuff. You're gonna have to have contracts. Um, one of the nice things is, is we originate contracts. And uh, today, I spent six hours originating contracts on CFDs because PaperStack doesn't support CFDs yet. Um, we've got that paperwork coming together, but I bought 12 assets and each one had a different vesting profile from the same. It was just in my, my head by the time I got, I was like, I can't wait just to like talk to somebody and not be in contract world. It was awful. So trust me. Like, right huh? <laughs> what's that? In your own cluster headache there. Oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. I was, uh, Brett came in and looked at me and I just looked at him with like eyes of laser beams. I was like, dude, leave me alone right now. Um, but so those are some of the things that, you know, when you do one, if you're doing one transaction, yeah, no big deal. You can knock a contract out or an AOM if you have to, um, assignment of mortgage for those who are not in, in, in the business yet. But when you're doing, when you're transacting, you know, 25 or 30 of these, to have a system that just originates everything for you and also it, it stops it from being error prone, you're taking out the human element, it's huge. It's huge. 
Yeah, so one thing I was going to do too, since we talked about the uh, Seth Kirk and IRA integration, um, I was going to go ahead and showcase that if, uh, if I can get it right this year. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm choosing the, uh, the vesting profile as the buyer. Uh, one interesting thing that we don't ever seem to bring up, but um, people can split these in, in half. So if someone was doing a JV deal, there could be, you know, we, we did it so that people with multiple different self-directed IRA companies can have a transaction together. So someone could be with NewView and Quest and, uh, you know, uh, Cama and like, it doesn't matter. They, they can all be in the same transaction and all of their custodians will get the, uh, the paperwork they need to approve. And uh, they can do JV deals all from their self-directed IRA. I'm, I'm going to make a video on how to do that. It's, it just happened. Just, just busy, but um, so I went ahead and connected it to uh, Quest since we were, we were talking about that earlier, you know. Uh, and then so it's here. Um, at this time, I'm going to sign the purchase sale agreement. Something really cool too is that you can send this purchase sale agreement off if you need somebody else to sign it. You just click this and put their email address in there. So if you're brokering a deal mm -hmm. and you you want to give this to a seller or to a buyer and you don't want them really know where it came from, you can send them the uh, the PSA. And they don't ever have to have a paper stack account. They can sign it, send it back, and it goes right back into the timeline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> Money. Because one of the biggest things that people mentioned about when we had our online note camp two weeks ago was, how do I find deals? How do I find deals? How do I broker? How do I wholesale? How do I get my first deal? My check, my shut up check. And this, that was a great, great nugget there for everybody. Good stuff. Yes. Um, so this, this, at this point, I signed it as the as the buyer. I'm going to go ahead and do it as the seller real quick. Brad, why don't you just stay on the buyer? I'll handle the seller. Well, because uh, the screen, all oh, this the assignment stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so it now this wasn't here before, where it says required for funding, but this area now pops in when we know they're investing from their self directed IRA, and it provides all the documents that Quest is going to need to see. To actually fund a deal so they'll be able to see the purchase though all the documents will show up in here for them to view the purchase uh the psa to be able to approve that uh, uh, we know a lot of them have special forms such as a doi a directive of investment or an investment assessment or so they have multiple names um those will all they can add that as the separate IRA company they can add that in here and you click and sign it however they do it hello sign or docu sign or offline print and uh, signature. Uh, it's, it's up to them. We made it really flexible. Um, you can have a conversation with your custodian right here. So if you're saying something like, you know, Mr. Custodian, you know, I need this document, whatever, just making something up. Um, they'll get an instant message on, on their side of the platform from PaperStack, and they'll be able to have a conversation on their version of PaperStack, and it'll come back to them. But uh, for the time being, I'm just going to click off of it because this is a, de a demo. But um. Now that we've actually got past the negotiation phase and this has gone green, basically tells everyone else that might have been bidding on this asset, hey, sorry, you, you're, uh, you, your offer is not going to be accepted now. This has already gone into a closing. But you're back burner in case something falls out, you'll get an email saying that that deal is back available. And uh, so as in the closing phase, uh, provide a bank account. As this, I'm in the seller, I'm sorry. So as a seller, I'm providing the bank account where I want to receive the funds. Uh, this is something really cool that we did uh, maybe in April, I think, um, is the servicing transfer. So after the fact of the deal being done, you don't have to email your servicer and say, hey, this deal has been sold or this asset has been sold. Please send it to servicer B. Uh, we automate all that for them. That's huge. Yeah. Scott, you can probably attest. When I sell an asset, I'm like, checks in the bank. Let's go. Happy we're getting checks. I never remember to tell my servicer, oh, by the way, I sold that. I don't have to worry about that anymore because PaperStack does it for me. As soon as the deal funds, it sends the email to them. It tells them cutoff date, who the buyer is. It, it, it copies um, the seller, the buyer, and both servicers. So everyone's on the same page. Very nice. Yeah, they, they tend to, yeah and it's, we've had some conversations with the servicers and they're like, that's a really cool feature. We appreciate that. It's right here. I'm very happy to say this is awesome. As, yeah, as of so, uh, the mortgage recording information of putting this into each transaction, uh, we found that it, for bigger deals, this was going to be a bottleneck, you know, because this is kind of a 
in the butt, just, you know, to do all this and write the exact legal description. We've been negotiating for, gosh, how long, Rick? Like six months and uh, with uh, Data Tree, and we got the contract into a price that we could afford. And uh, Mike's doing it now. Like he was uh, here today, and he was automating this so that now all this information will be pulled in automatically. And so, so yeah, so you can imagine uh, filling out the, this is all the information we need for the assignments. Now you don't have to fill that out. So if you're doing a 50 loan transaction, Think about the time and the money it saves because it's not having to call attorneys. Yeah. <laughs> and it originates a doc. I mean, I can't tell you how many times like trailing docs. I've been wait. I get you know fund it, close it. I don't get an assignment for six weeks. Right? Yeah. Maybe more. No, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Now the assignments can be generated literally the minute it's ready to go. That's huge. Because it's pulling in all the data. It's all legal recording data right from public record. That was, that's probably one of the biggest um, accomplishments all encompassing globally on paper stack that we've done because that was one of the biggest bottlenecks. And we went back and started um, testing it against stuff that had been on the platform and had uncovered um, a couple of them that we looked at that there were just typos, uh, just human error that happens. And, this stuff wouldn't have happened had we had um, this feature in place. So this is going to be, this is going to be huge. Yeah, this to be out probably if uh, everything goes right. Probably I want Mike's fast. Probably the end of the week. So you know, I, I mean, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I know how fast he works. And you know, Brett, don't write that. It'll be out next Thursday. It'll be out next Thursday. Okay. End of the sprint. That's right. That's All right. It. All right, so the other parts are uh, provide shipping information for sellers. This is because they request an audit where they're going to send the collateral, um, or this is actually a return address, actually. If, uh, if you know, they say like an audit went bad and the, and the buyer wanted to back out of the deal, uh, we provide them first class, first class shipping label to get their stuff back. Um, and after this part, the seller uh, ships, uh, we give them a first class shipping label through via FedEx to uh, send the collateral to a third party um, uh, auditing company called uh, EdgeMec, and they will view the collateral and they'll upload an audit. Uh, and, and so once that happens, an audit is provided, uh, the buyer and the seller can see that within uh, the file, uh, where is it at? Due diligence tab? Yeah. <laughs> Only done this a hundred times. But yeah. Brett kind of went over that real quickly, but the, um, so in the closing process, the closing, um, you know, different closing options we have. One is an escrow and an audit. So the buyer takes their money, they wire it to an escrow. The seller sends a collateral file directly to a collateral audit company. And they're going to provide an audit, give you color copies. One of the things that stem this, or this, that caused this is we actually received the collateral file during one trade when the only thing original in the collateral file was the lost note affidavit. Uh. We, this is, this is a no joke, this happened. And um, that's a real sickening feeling when that happens, because you're like, wow. And it was a non-performer. So, <laughs> owner op, non-performer, you're like, wow. Well, this could be a, this could be a long It's gonna drag out for a little bit, basically. Yeah, hopefully they don't get a smart attorney or just one with a pulse, because we would be <laughs> in trouble. Um, but that, so that's one of the closing options which is, uh, I think that accounts for roughly 60%, mm -hmm. um, somewhere in there, roughly 60% of the closings um, that happen on paper stack. 92% of the closings that happen on paper stack have the collateral audit. Mm -hmm. It's just one of the things that happen. People just, they love it. Most of the time people are like, I didn't even know you could do that. Mm -hmm. and so we're, uh, that's one of the things we're pretty proud of also um, is it's opening and it's making it um, a little bit closer to the way a real estate transaction would happen, which everyone's real comfortable with the title company. So this is, a, it, this gets people in that same mindset. Okay. I'm sending my money. They're doing the, they're looking over the docs. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that's basically here in the collateral audit. And then of course we have these other things down here that uh, we, we don't have them in yet. They were working with uh, I'm sure you know of the bag network. So eventually when that day, you know, the stuff will be there. 
Um, just so that the bag network is is Dickie uh, Baldwin. Baldwin Advisory Group for my buddy Dickie Baldwin out there does an amazing job with vendors and, and some of the different things there as well too. So yeah. Uh, so this part, oh, I'm, I'm on the seller side this way. Okay, so as a buyer, I have a couple things to do. I need to provide the shipping address of where I want the collateral to go post closing, and I need to provide my servicing information of where I want servicing to be land home. And now, after I've viewed the collateral uh, audit, I have to sign the disbursement agreement. Basically, this is just saying, I agree to move forward with this deal, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and fund this. At this point, uh, my role as a buyer is complete. And everything falls back into the seller's hands. At that point, once the disbursement agreement has gone through, uh, the seller will... Did I hit it? Oh, I didn't hit it. Oh. You did. It just takes a minute because the demo. The demo server, I guess. Yeah. Huh, okay. Let me go back to the top. A lot of times we just say something like someone's timeline. It's up. Yeah, sometimes I go, oh, when? Okay, cool. All right, so as a seller, of course, we have to do the assignment. Uh, this is something we've done now that um, uh, we integrate with a part, uh, third party app called Notarize, and they'll come on the screen and uh, notar uh, you know, basically sign it right there on the screen. It's uh, pretty secure because you're on video. So it's kind of, can't, you can't see that you didn't do it. It's, uh, yeah, this is, uh, it's valid in all, it's valid in 49 of the 50 states. Mm -hmm. As soon as you're ready to sign as a seller, you click a button, it pops up and you, it puts you in a video chat. She watches you sign it. She applies a digital audit. You've got, now you've got a recorded video and mm -hmm. um, a stamp of it. It doesn't get much better than that. It doesn't get much more concrete. I've never been to a notary where they videoed me signing it. Um, that's that's cool. taking out a, a bullet. It's taking a bullet out of the foreclosure gun. I'll tell you that much. And then the same for the, uh, the launch, which is, you know, you sign that digitally. You can uh, let's do the pen signature. This is a fun one too. If you're out and about, like on your iPad, it's kind of hard to do from a mouse, but uh, easier to do from like an iPad or phone. At that point, the uh, seller will sign the disbursement agreement when it catches up to me. And at that, after this is done, this is just the seller saying, "I'm good. Let's move forward. Let's close this deal." And then at this point, the auditor will get an email basically saying, "Hey, auditor, here's a first-class shipping label." Go ahead and send the collateral file to wherever the buyer designated. And uh, after that time, once that uh, shipment is, has um, gone from waiting to in transit, at that time only does the funds actually go from the escrow company to uh, wherever the seller wanted it to go. And as you know, the, and the collateral is going to wherever the buyer wanted it to go. And so the complete, the whole transaction was completed on uh, fully digital. Everything's here for your records if you ever need it. If you ever needed to download the files at any time, they're always here. All the information regarding the note sale is within the metadata information and uh, at the fully digital closing on the paper stack. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's, uh, that's it, man. That's the, the jewel. <laughs> now, uh, questions for those that are joining us, either watching us live or joining, uh, live streaming us. What I'm basically doing right back and forth here is looking – to see who's asking questions online. People are loving it here. Um, where do you see, uh, hang on a second here, what was the question here? Uh, people are looking forward to that, that's good. Perfect on that. Um, where, anything that's dragged out a little bit longer on, on the closings you guys have done so far? Anything? So I know you guys have worked to, to correct things, but where do you see the biggest kind of learning curve is for buyers or sellers on it? Biggest learning curve. Well, I, this is kind of like not. I say it's not our fault, but it is our fault because we're not we're not stopping it. But um, I think it's the CFDs coming onto the platform. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's it looks and smells so much like a loan um, in that the data that you use to onboard it that um, those have been getting on there, and you know. I even got in, started getting into closing on one and I started going through the DD and I go, well, this is a contract for deed. And so there's been a couple of hangups there um, with people like, you know, paper stack, it doesn't, it doesn't um, generate the assignment of seller's interest. It literally was, um, it'll generate an assignment of mortgage or an assignment of deed of trust. Um, it doesn't generate quick claim deeds. Um, and I should say there's a big caveat there yet. 
Um, right. There, that is, I would say that's probably end of the month it's going to be on there. We just have to do it um, because of the amount of people that are, look, I want CFDs. Um, yeah. I need them on there. That and then um, the ability to sell a partial is coming onto the platform very shortly because there's a lot of people out there asking for that. Brett, what other hangups are you seeing? You run support, um, you know, pretty much full time. Yeah. I mean, I think it's the hangups are it's the unknown unknown that, you know, people don't know what they don't know. And maybe they haven't, you know, they didn't see a video or they didn't, they didn't see a, a webinar like this. So they didn't actually understand the full process. And you're like, you, you'll see people in a, uh, in a transaction saying, where do I, where do I put the PSA or, here, let me let me upload this or and I'll uh, generate the assignment. It's like no, no, just just follow the, the, the to yeah to do this and it'll do it all for you. So that's it's the, uh, once people do it one time, we have people that are now ninja users. I mean, there's people that fly through it. Um, a couple guys that you know, you, you get on there, we'll go you know, tonight, go to sleep, and you know, the next morning you wake up, they're halfway done with the transaction. It's like wow, these guys are really they're getting it. And so I think it's just that's the learning curve. It's just an unknown unknown, and I think as more time goes on, people will kind of get it. And, uh, Brett, would you say that the uh, honestly the people that seem like they have um, the most difficulty up front are the people who have been in the industry for so yeah. long because they're like, well, when do I do this? When do I give the uh, do the uh, purchase sale agreement? I need to get the best thing profile. When do I originate the assignment? When do I, and I was like, look, you don't have to do that. This yeah. does everything for you, and um, that's one of those things where we, we notice when people were coming on. We have repeat people coming onto the platform who are just, they're just loading up deals and then closing them because they just like the process. They're like, sure. it's so much easier. It streamlines everything. I don't have to worry about it. Um, but the people who are brand new, they're like, they kind of look at it and go, okay, there's a to-do list. And they just follow, they don't know. So they just follow the to-do list and it does everything for them. So that's, um, I would say a big hang up is sometimes for new people, they're like, um, or for the seasoned veterans, just like, Sitting back, letting go of control, a lot of type A's, just let go and look. we'll walk you through the process. Yeah, it's funny, we were at a conference and um, we had a, a first time buyer. Um, he said when he got into the transaction and saw who his counterparty was, he was kind of intimidated because that person you know, does a lot of deals. And uh, he said, I had confidence so if I just follow the to-do list, uh, I'd make it through and that's exactly what happened. So he, he closed his first deal on, or first show ever on paper stack and, and he was able to do it with somebody that you know it's really really seasoned uh and just by following just to, everything on the to-do to, to do list that's awesome got a couple questions here for some people that are watching us live laura blunk says trailing docs that is brilliant she says that in the facebook live she's loving that uh let's see who else here so frank says looking frank uh, hashtag frank uh says looking forward to the ability of exporting multiple assets to a csv or excel file Yes, so he can put his overcomplicated due diligence <laughs> I th I think ROI I, calculator to work. I think I know, uh, I think I talked to Frank recently, uh, and that is actually coming with the new for sale page. So, because we've had people that, you know, they want to run their own numbers. And our biggest thing was trying to figure out how to do it without having these assets just floating around the internet. So there's, yeah. we might develop a system of knowing that because every every time something exports is like a timestamp, so we would know, you know, kind of, you know, if that got out, but um, it has been asked for. I, I think me and Frank just spoke about it just recently, and uh, um, yeah, it's coming. With that that new for sale page should be out in soon. It's in, yeah. it's in print, which means that we got uh, two weeks, and so Mike should have, probably have it done. And that that will be one of the features that is going to be in there. Great, um, Charles asks, how will you sell? How will the sell of land contracts work on the platform? Pretty much the same way. You're just going to have to change a few tweaks to it, right? Yeah. yeah, it's going to be very similar. Um, we have uh, we have somebody we partnered up with, industry name, can't release the name yet, but um, who who has pretty much templates for every single state and all the little nuances in specific counties. Um, you know, one of the things about PaperStack is if there's an issue with, for instance, you know, there's some of those crazy counties out there where you got to have just the right margin or you gotta have a signature or, or, or two signatures here. What happens is if I buy if I buy an asset from seller A and it's in that county and he originates the assignment and gives it back to me and I go to record it and it gets kicked back, I gotta go back to seller A. Now, if I go to seller B 
and he in that same county and he and he gives me an assignment and he gets kicked back again now i go back to seller b on paper stack if one gets kicked back it'll never get kicked back again because we code it into the platform and it's and it's and it makes it go the whole time so that's one of the biggest things with the cfds it's just been such a accumulating all the different documents because there's more documents than um and there's in you know there's a bit more structure in mortgages and deed of trust than there are in CFDs. And so accounting for all the little nuances and making the platform as flexible and fluid as it needs to be to accommodate those, that's really been the biggest head up, or, um, hang up or uh, you know, development challenge, but we're tackling it pretty good. And we're, I think um, I would say within, by the end of the month, it'll be out there. A uh, question from Charles Wick, is there fees for sellers and buyers on the platform? Sure is. Yep, we got to make money. Um, we charge one percent to the buyer and one percent to the seller. To and that covers, you know, the collateral audit. It covers all your shipping, all the documents that we generate, and um, you know, pretty much everything you've seen is is accounted for. If you want to utilize escrow and the transactions underneath a hundred grand, it's two fifty a side, which is really, I mean, honestly, it's super cheap. If you go out there and try to find escrow. Um, for under a thousand bucks, good luck. We, we couldn't do it. We had to negotiate. Um, that was another long negotiation, but we got it done. Um, so we found that most people are pretty happy with it. And they say, wow, um, somebody actually said, wow, I didn't realize how much the platform actually does for you. And, you know, from the six hours I spent today on contracts, believe me, I'm happy to pay. I'm a, I'm a paying user. If I'm on there, I pay the 1%. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And the two fifty aside for escrows, that's pretty, that's really really cheap. Allison, I think you may have heard incorrectly. Uh, she asked, "Did I hear you say you originate loans, and you're not originating, guys?" No, we do not. Nope, we're not originating. But um, we are soon to be integrating with somebody who can originate your loan or take your CFD and turn it into a mortgage. So that'll be coming later. Now, is there an easy way if people have loans? Is there an easy way for them to do it and export from a servicer or a spreadsheet so they can do a mass upload? Can you guys kind of go through that real fast? Yep. So every time someone becomes a seller, uh, they have to go through the seller onboarding, which just basically means you know reaching out to us, telling us about your your assets. So we make sure that they're coming from a servicer or if they were self service, why? Um, but once they're approved, they're given a secret import email. And if their service wants to play ball, they can give them this email address and every night they can send a data dump to that email address and we'll automatically upload it into their, um, their uh, portal. Their, yeah, their account. And so uh, if they want to do it themselves, uh, they can, we've mapped a number of different tapes. We've mapped Land Home, FCI, uh, SN. Uh, Madison. We have a tape that, so Shantae's got the, uh, we created a special paper stack tape because they didn't have a tape export. And so she has that. And so she said she'd be happy to put people's assets on there. Um, if, you know, with that, that tape format, because that will automatically import. And so I think that was pretty much it. I think we did Main, Main Street one time. So I think we have yeah. them as well. We, uh, our, uh, you know, we have assets listed on paper stack. And if you go look at the for sale page, it's under Cloud Capital. But if you go look on there, it'll show you um, last time the data was updated. And our stuff is really, it's unless there's some sort of, um, unless, actually, I think it even happens over the weekend. Um, but it's it'll, it'll say, you know, updated within the past 24 hours, because we get a 24 hour uh, dump, which is, you know, that's the name of the game. I just did a, did a trade to where I went and got the actual final UPVs and one was off by $7,000. Wow. And it was like, um, fortunately, the seller worked with me and he was, you know, he's like, wow, that's my fault. You know, he wrote me back a check for the difference. Um, but yeah, so if you click on, here's, here's our assets. If you click on one of our, uh, one of our loans, um, it'll show you that, you know, watch it not be there, but <laughs> uh, 20 hours ago. So, you know, it's within the next four hours, they're going to do another update. We have all this information. So that's always key is having information that is as fresh as it gets. Um, one of the things, um, as we get more integrated with, with servicers, they're going to be able to start sending in servicing notes. And that's key. You know, eventually in our roadmap, 
we'd like to have PaperStack as a management platform to handle, you know, all right, you handled the buying and the selling. Um, because right now, unless you're a larger fund, there's not really a, for us, a great management platform that encompasses like, you know, doing your, um, ordering your, you know, property management or anything like that um, on top of, you know, your accounting. So eventually that stuff will be integrated within PaperStack, which will be pretty key. Um, also being piped in is all your legal data. So um, I don't know if you guys know Activist Legal. Um, we are actually in talks with them to have all that stuff funneled in, all your legal comments from your attorneys, right? If you, if you use your, uh, if you use Activist Legal, which is be pretty big. Uh, Frank asked a question. How long does it take to set up and organize a seller's assets? Let's say I have 20 assets to sell. It doesn't take that long. I mean, as long as if you have to tape uh, in one of the formats we've mapped, you can just send over those. It'll automatically come into your import history. And as soon as it comes in here, like here's a, a standard tape, you know, and then uh, once that comes in, it'll uh, show up in your mortgage notes and you'll be able to go in, um, just start creating listings that way. So that, that's, and then it, it'd show up eventually inside of here. I would say if, um, if like we, we always encourage people to start with just five, you know, start with five or less assets just to get it, get it go through one full closing before you, you list 20 because uh, it'll, it'll be new. You know, there might be some things that get hung up and it's always easier to start because it, what happens is when new assets get listed, they get a lot of questions. People will hit you up and it's a lot easier to manage when you just have like five than if, than if you had 20. Um, but to get, you know, five assets up, can do it within an hour i mean i know that much i mean that's even adding like adding like uh documents and everything you can add you know all, all your documents set them to private so that uh you know they're you know you sh you decide when to share them you know so that you can you can do all that add photos really really write a good seller subscription uh soon it will actually be faster too because we're getting rid of titles we're going to be generating these titles because uh we found that the titles fluctuate a lot. Some people write in all caps. Some people put all these crazy numbers and just, we looked at a lot of different uh, for sale type of um, marketplaces and uh, we saw the way they structured things and it was very uniform. And it just, it's one less thing for the sellers to have to do. And uh, we're still gonna leave the seller's comments for them to actually sell however they wanna you know, portray the asset or list it. Cool. Paul asked a good question here. He goes, do you have any plans to add days on paper stack field the way a realtor sites do i think we did was that yeah days on the yep we have days on here um we're going to be adding a lot of oh. so i say we're going to be adding a lot of stuff right now we're in a funding round so um i don't know if anybody out there is interested in investing in, in paper stack if you are you know you can send me an email and um we've actually found that most of our investors up to this point have been no industry professionals um just because they see what we're doing and they're like, wow, this is great. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we talk to a lot of investors and anyone who's buying notes is an investor and they see this as an opportunity. But that being said, um, yes, we are adding um, days on market. We're adding um, seller rating or well, user ratings, I guess you would say it. it so that way, you know, you're, you're it's self-policing, if you will. People, so basically, you know, a bad somebody who's a bad seller, they're gonna get a bad star ratio like Uber. Basically, they're not gonna be around very long. Instead of calling it uh, Uber, it'll be Nuber, Noter, Nuber. Uber. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got neutered. <laughs> Better than pubered. <laughs> yeah. True. Uh, good stuff. What questions do you guys have for him? How many assets do you have on there right now? Two hundred forty. I think it was 240 as of today. It fluctuates between uh, about that and maybe a little bit higher, but uh, 260, 240 is right, it's usually right around there. Have you guys tracked your fastest closing from the time something uploaded to when it sold? Yeah, it was like seven days, wasn't it? Rick, it was so I forget from the time that it was loaded. Um, oh, no, loaded. I don't know. No, I just know when they started a transaction. Yeah, it's so. You could probably close one in in one day if you didn't do escrow and you didn't do audit. Yeah, hundred percent. You could do one in one day. Um, I've taken one from front to back in in about a day, but it was somebody who that wasn't how long we engaged for. 
but they got comfortable with the asset. They ran their numbers. They waited on the BPO. And then once they got all their, their, their data together, we were still in the negotiations phase and we closed it in a day. Cause he was like, look, I know you. Um, he goes, if you send me a bad collateral, I know where to find you. And I was like, uh, you know, no worries. And so we, we closed that one in a day, but that's definitely not the average. I would say, you know, probably 12 days from the time people start going at it till the time it closes, which is still very, very, very fast. Yeah, exactly. Because you can track if somebody's doing their stuff and uploading the docs and yep. carrying it back and forth. I mean, there's exceptions to every rule for the most part, mm -hmm. but uh, this is really nice. This is pretty freaking cool. Thanks. We, we uh glad you like it, man. We're, uh, we built it for you. Oh, shucks. Art. <laughs> <laughs> flyer will get you everywhere yeah uh, <laughs> now if uh for those that are watching this what what would you love for them to do would you love them to go on their register as a buyer or to upload their docs what's the biggest thing you're looking for to we're yeah. looking for good buyers obviously i mean we want people to come on the platform who are interested in buying and selling assets whether you're a buyer or a seller um you know you can you can register for free right mm -hmm. Um, Scott, I'm sure you'll share a link to register and, and come onto the platform. And once we get you registered, just go, go check things out. You can look, it's nice cause you can go start looking at assets and you don't have to have the scariness of like emailing somebody, Hey, can you send me a tape of assets? Knowing you're not going to do anything with it. You can go in here, look at assets, run numbers, get comfortable with it. And then when you're ready, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm comfortable with the system. Let's go ahead. I know it, there's kind of like bowling with the bumpers in the middle. You're not going to go off. You're not going to go off track. It's going to keep you down the lane and get you front to back closed. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked a question about proof of funds. I missed that part. Are you requesting proof of funds uh, through the system in a way or fashion or not really? Not right now as system wide, you don't have to. However, as a seller, it's not uncommon for the seller to say, yes, I've got no problem jumping into a transaction with you. Go ahead, give me your proof of funds. Or don't be surprised um, if a seller says, here, here's our NDA I need you to sign. Yeah. And, and that's just, that's commonplace right now, especially with us adding um, institutional, institutional sellers right now. And I'm, when I say institutional, you know, there's a three, like I said, a $3 billion fund. And there's another $12 billion fund who is um, who's interested? If they said, "Look, once we move past the summer, we're gonna we're gonna come back with you on there." But there's some really really big players out there who have some inventory that you know the twelve billion dollar fund has three billion in non performing debt. That's just like unbelievable. So there's a lot of um, it's it's a good time to be getting on there and get your feet wet because there is inventory. And I don't know if anybody saw the news today. But it, apparently the stock market took a bit of a hit. And um, then the 10-year uh, the yield curve is sounding off alarms like it hasn't done since 2007. So um, it's a good time to be getting into notes and learning this because there's another, there's another one coming. Yeah, that's definitely the truth. Paul asked a question here. I'm going to probably be the one to answer. Go see. How about some calculators like net yield, borrowers, equity in the property, et cetera? Paul, those are going to be calculators that you're going to need to figure out because they can't verify a value on here. You're ordering your own BPO, and they're not going to put a calculator on here for that. That's going to be completely up to you, especially net yield. That's going to be directly on you and your your due diligence. You guys agree to that, Rick? Uh, yes, but we actually have the overlay uh, calculator. It's actually in development right now. Um, it's going to be on there and it's going to cover five or six different exit strategies. It's going to allow you to plug your numbers in. Um, and then it will allow you to calculate how much you want, or, uh, it will allow you to calculate your purchase price based off of a targeted yield. Um, and that obviously would be for performing loans The non-performing loans. It gets a little hairy, um, to start trying to figure all that out. Um, but it's going to be a bit of a fluid calculation. Um, but yes, I would say for now, definitely you need to have your own calculator. You need to, you know, you need to be able to run your own numbers. Um, we're going to provide some, you know, definitely will be some basic stuff to start with. We have an advanced um, button on there to where if you really want to 
nerd out on it, you can do that, you know, like I would do, but, um, <laughs> yeah, it's coming actually. So that's, it's, it's part of this sprint. So within mm -hmm. a week or two, it'll be out. Awesome. Good stuff to hear. What are the questions do you guys and gals have for Rick and Brett tonight from paperstack.com? Uh, you guys have done a tremendous job. Uh, big round of applause for you guys in the front here while we're waiting for questions come in. Out there, I know you guys have put, put, some t put a little bit of work into it coming up on two years of your reset, correct? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's been, you know, well, November of 17, we launched the beta, and here we are coming up in, you know, shortly we'll be in November of 19. So from the time we launched the initial product, Till, till our rewrite till now. Yeah, it's going to be, it'll be, you know, it was a while. It was a um, long, sure. long battle. There you go. Sherry asked a question there. Is there a way to set alerts for new listings? Yep. yep. That's in the yeah. uh, notifications. And you can do saved searches to where you can go through, you can create your own specific, like, look, I just want performing loan, first position, under a hundred grand in value with an 8% um, interest rate, what in Ohio that's got a pink door and you click save search and it'll save it. And then it'll notify you every time one of those pop up on the platform. Um, so, I mean, you can get really detailed or you can say, look, I'm looking for anything first position performing something as simple as that. Notify me when it matches. You can even have it star the star, the search or star the listing when it comes on there. So you can go on there and quickly sort it out. You don't have nice. to search for it. Good stuff there. Good stuff. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, Paul asks, uh, Paper Stack works well on Chrome, but on Fire Firefox, I get error messages. Mm -hmm. hmm. We're, uh, I don't know about that. I know for sure if you're using Internet 11 or I Internet Explorer 11, we're not supporting that anymore. Um, it just, it's, you know, you can develop for all of them, and we do spend a lot of time developing for it, but there's just issues. If she is having an error, um, reach out to Paperstack support and let us know what that is, because Firefox is one of the ones we do support, and so we'll get that um, into QA, get it fixed and uh, redeployed. Um, it's impossible to have it be bug-free. You know, obviously the uh, Google Chrome is the creme de la creme as far as the Paperstack experience, um, Safari is really good as well, but when it comes to when you start moving outside that, um, especially Internet Explorer, it's tough. But let us know at the paper stack support, which is on the platform, and we'll be able to get those fixed for you. Also, also too, if, if it, ever an error does happen, usually it pops up a screen that basically says what happened. If you just put a, hey, I was on this page and this happened. We get those. We look at all of them. They come through our Slack channel, and uh, we will look at it and we will fix it. You know, that's our that's our goal to try to. And because Firefox is, you know, a lot of people do use it. So that's, uh, that's one of the ones we do use. Too. The, the, the IE 11 is uh, super old now. I think it's like, I think it would be 2012 or something like that. So, I mean, I think it, the edge is when they had the edge, now they're on edge 17. So it's been around for a while. So I think it's, uh, that's why. Bunch of freaking search engine dorks. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we we have Firefox to. works the best, right? Unless, of course, you got to... Uh, for the most part, but anyway. <laughs> what? Any other final questions for Rick and uh, Brett there before we let them get home to their kids and family there? Because they are out of Orlando. Orlando! Mm -hmm. We'll see ya. That's right, baby. Anybody got any final questions? I'm going to actually be out there next week, actually. Oh, really? For podcast movement. I'll be out there, yeah. So, nice. Let's see here. Questions here. Uh, how to stay informed with new features added? Uh, email list. Uh, there's an email coming out tomorrow morning if you're on. Uh, it's really, really neat. Uh, I'll, I'll save it for that because um, it's basically what, something we've collected over the last six months. But that'll be out at 9 tomorrow morning. But email is the best way or follow us on Facebook or LinkedIn. I usually make videos when we roll out new features. Uh, so self directed IRA videos, I made a lot of those. Uh, it's probably the best way. Cool. Awesome. They say thank you. All right, guys, go to paperstack.com. Click on the sign up link there. Get registered. Like I said, doesn't cost you anything. Get on there. Start playing around with it. Uh, you got some nice sellers on there. I was looking at the list earlier. So yeah, you got some good stuff there. Cool. Thank you.
Is this not you selling your own stuff anymore, huh? No. Because that's what we all do when we begin, right? We're all starting, like, I got to upload something for myself. You guys have added a lot of great sellers. I mean, your stuff was good, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm just, I'm just poking fun a little fun. You know what I mean? No, you're right. Like, to, to begin with, it was like we were the only ones listing stuff. And then, um, you know, the more, the longer we were around, people started coming on. And then, you know, um, people started listing stuff and selling stuff. And they're like, wow, I got, I actually got a really good return there. And, um, you know, we had one seller who was like, look, I'm getting 77%. If I can come on your platform and get higher, I'd love to do it. And they got 84 cents on the dollar. And they were just stoked. I'm like, good stuff. Yep. <laughs> Good stuff there. Well, hey guys, thanks so much for coming on Note Night in America. Mm -hmm. Appreciate sharing here. Excited to see all the changes that are going on. Dickie Baldwin says he'll see you in Houston in a couple hey. weeks. I feel like a celebrity now. I was like, I've been on Note Night in America with Scott Carson. I expect to walk out on the street and people tackle me for my damn city autograph. So thank <laughs> you for having us on. I'll make it famous, baby. I'll make it famous. How did they get an email saying, "Hey, I'm, I'm on the, I'm listening to the podcast." I'm like, "Yes." That's exactly right. Isn't that a beautiful thing? It I, is. I, I geek out there every time somebody says, "Man, I listen to the podcast." I listen to the podcast. I'm like, "Awesome! I love it." So. And, well, thank you. From you know, we really appreciate it. Everything. And anytime, doing. guys. Anytime. We'll talk some more uh, here next week as well, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, that's going to wrap it up for this evening's Note Night in America, everybody. Go out and jump on their website, paperstack.com. Get registered there. Start browsing around. Trust me, the more you mess around with it, the more you play with it, the better you'll get at it. And we'll talk to you all later, everybody. Bye.